Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and happy Pi Day everyone. Yes, it is the 14th of March, so grab your pies. Today, we're going to be talking about pie. So a while back, I took a look at someone that thought they had managed to debunk pie. Now, I have a lot of certainty that pi is 3.14159. In fact, I have as much certainty of that as an astronaut has that the Earth is a globe. So basically what I'm saying is, unless there is some worldwide conspiracy where even NASA is hacking into my computer to stop me from finding out the real value of pi, then I know what pi is. So the question that a lot of people might be asking is, how have I figured out the actual value of pi? And that is a good question. And I could start by trying to measure pi. Now when I attempted to measure this earlier today, I got a diameter of 65mm and a circumference of 208mm. Now when I run those numbers, I get a value of 3.2 for pi. But there is a bit of a problem. Because my tape measure does have some width to it. If I account for this width by say adding 1mm to the diameter, well then I get a value of 3.15151515 repeating. The problem though is that that measurement isn't particularly accurate. So let's try a different way using a book. So here we've got a quarter circle with a radius of 10 and of course we can calculate pi off this because a full circle is only 4 quarter circles. Now we're going to use an interesting way to work this out because what we're going to do is we're just going to figure out the length of this line here. So here we just have a right angle triangle and we know that this side has a length of 10 and that this side has a length of 10 so all we have to do is just use the Pythagorean theorem to work out the hypotenuse. For those that forgot the Pythagorean theorem it is simply the hypotenuse, otherwise h, squared equals a squared plus b squared. I decided to rewrite this in pen just to make it a bit easier to see. But anyway, our hypotenuse here is simply 10 squared plus 10 squared, and then we just get the square root of that. When I put that into the calculator, it comes out to 14.142. Da, 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 because that's an irrational number. At least I think it is. Now seeing as the formula to work out the circumference of a circle is c equals 2 pi r, what we can do is we can actually rearrange that equation to work out what pi is based on the circumference and the radius of the circle. That equation would be pi equals c over r, or c over 2r should I say. Now because we are using a quarter circle we can actually change this equation further because for a quarter circle would have pi equals 2c over r. Now here our value for r is 10 but what is our value for c? Well we're actually going to use this here 14.1421. Now using 14.1421 may seem a bit odd because that is the value of the hypotenuse of this triangle here and certainly not the length of this arc right here. However there is a reason for this and we will get to it. But anyway when we plug all these numbers into the equation we get 2.8284 etc. Now obviously this is nowhere near pi, we're still way off. but what if we use more triangles here and a triangle from there to there. So now we've just simply got to figure out the hypotenuse of these two triangles. Now we know the base of these triangles. The base of each of these triangles has a value of 5. But it's trying to work out the height of these triangles that is going to be a bit more challenging. Fortunately though, what we can do is we can add yet another triangle in to solve, which makes life so much easier. And that triangle is this one, here. So I just realised that I screwed up with how big I drew the circle. I drew it 11 squares instead of 10 squares, but just 
pretend like it's 10 squares because we're working with maths here rather than actually measuring things. So we know the length of the hypotenuse here because the hypotenuse is essentially the radius of the quarter circle. So the length of this here is also 10. So now all we have to do is we have to figure out the length of this part of the triangle here. And to figure that out, you essentially go a squared equals h squared minus b squared. So that's just the Pythagorean theorem, although a few things are switched around. We know that b is 5 and h is 10. So once we plug those numbers into the equation, we get 8.6. 66025. Now we know the height of this triangle here because the height of that triangle there is essentially 10 minus the number that we just got. So now we know the height of this triangle here, we can essentially use this version of the Pythagorean theorem here to work out the hypotenuse, which is 5. 5. 5.17. Six, three, eight. So now here comes the simple part. We have the height of this triangle here, which is 8.66025. And we have the base of the triangle, which is 5. You do the Pythagorean theorem on it, and you get a result of 10. Now all you have to do is you just have to add these two numbers together. And seeing as one of them is 10, it's very easy. It's just... 15.17638 Now what we do is we use this number instead of this number for C and when we do that we get a result of 3.035276 If you've been following along, congratulations you have now got a better approximation of pi now, as we add more and more triangles, we should get a closer and closer approximation of pi. And note that you'll never actually go above pi using this method because all the triangles are contained nicely within the circle. Now, I've actually done this, except not in a book. Alright, so I may be filming my computer screen, which may seem a bit flirty, but it has a couple of bonuses. The first being that I can hold up this notebook to explain what's going on in the program, and I can also stick my face in front of the camera whenever I want. So for those of you who might not understand programming, I'll try and explain to the best of my abilities what exactly is going on here. This first line here is actually just setting the radius for the circle. Next, you've got the value called PrevY, which is just setting the total height here, which at the start will always be the same as the radius of the circle. So next, you've got this value called circ, which is basically going to be the circumference once everything is said and done. We're going to be adding the hypotenuse of the triangles to this value here. And next, we have a loop, and this loop will repeat whatever times the radius is. So if the radius is 10, the loop will go through 10 times. If it's 20, 20 times, 1,000, 1,000 times, etc. So this line here is just trying to figure out the height of the first triangle that it has to calculate. Then in this line, it just has to minus the height that it got from whatever the height was previously at. For the first loop through, it will be 10 or whatever the radius is. Then it just figures out the hypotenuse of the triangle and then adds it to the circumference. You'll notice that it says 1 here and that's because the base of every triangle that we're trying to figure out will have a value of 1 and I mean 1 squared will always be 1 so there's no point in doing any extra math that doesn't need to be done. And the next part of the loop is just setting the height that it's going to have to use here instead of just the default r. And once it's done with all that, it just calculates pi using 2c over r, like what we did. Now obviously there's the question of, does this work? Does this actually give the results that we've already gotten? And to answer that, we just simply have to run the program, and then type in 2, which was what we were working with on paper, sort of. We, we did things a little bit differently, but we should get the same answer of 3.035276. So what do we get? We get an answer of 
3.035276. Exactly the answer that we got earlier. So now we're not limited by the amount of triangles we can be bothered to calculate by hand. We can just essentially run the program and then input any number that we want. So if we go 10, we get a value of 3.1322. If we say we want to calculate 100, we get a value of 3.14129. If we want a value of 1000 even, we get a result of 3.14158. I mean, that's looking far more pie-like each time I add more. We can go 10,000. And then we get a value of 3.14159. And that is basically what I remember of pi off by heart. So, yeah. I must say, it's looking very much like a pie. And for anyone wondering, this is the highest number that I've tried it with, where it gives a decent value, and that is 100 million. If I go for 100 million, it takes a few seconds to calculate, but it does give a really good approximation of pi at 3.14159265358999. People often see when, say when they see this, that the last two digits are around the wrong way. And to me, that's fine because I know that there will be floating point errors because we're not using the most accurate types of numbers. So yes, that is how I have calculated pi myself. If it's not pi, then I don't know what it is. Pizza? So that is by no means the only way to approximate pi. I mean, pi has been approximated to about 50 trillion digits, if I'm correct, which you're not going to be able to do with my way. Now, I may not be able to approximate pi to 50 trillion digits, but I have tried a couple of other ways of approximating pi before. So the first time I tried to approximate pi, I actually used what is called the Leibniz formula. And it will get you an approximation, however, the problem with it is just that it's very, very slow. And it's really impractical when you have other ways. Another one that I've done is I actually worked out the area of a quarter circle, and then worked out pi based on that. That was better than the Leibniz formula, but it was also rather slow compared to what I've got now. Although, that was what I was using when I made the video on the person that thought they had managed to debunk pi. Speaking of, if pi weren't actually 3.14159, don't you think people would have caught on to that by now? Because first off, you'd have someone like me that would come along and say, well, I'm going to approximate pi. Hmm, why is it not matching up with what people say pi is? And secondly, you've got a lot of people that use pi for all kinds of things, like physicists use pi. Builders may even use pi at times. Bakers even bake pies. And if pi were wrong, there would be someone that uses pi a lot that would come forward. But anyway, I hope everyone enjoyed me rambling about pi on Pi Day for 13 minutes. Uh, maybe some people even learnt something, in which case that was great. If you liked the video, why not leave a like and subscribe, and also ring the bell notification so that you get notified of when I post new videos. As always, a big shout out to my $20 or more patrons. What Jesus, Hugh Jars, MC Nutkin, Jane Spade, Wolfie, Mori, The Friendly Antinatalist, Graymore Ghost, and Kid Vicious. If you want to support me financially, you can do so on Patreon, there should be a link right there. But anyway, I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.